Vegetable Peeler It is a kitchen tool consisting of slatted metal blade attached to the handle used to remove the outer skin or peel of certain vegetables, frequently potatoes and carrots, and fruits, such as apples, pears, and others. A paring knife may also be used to peel vegetables. Wire Strainer This bowl-shaped tool made from wire mesh is great for sifting or sprinkling powdered sugar or cocoa over foods as well as for draining foods. Wire strainers are also known as sieves. Tips on how to make garnishes last. To maintain and heighten the color of fresh vegetables, blanch them before using them to make garnishes. Simply immerse the vegetables in boiling water for one minute Drain and plunge into a large bowl filled with ice water or rinse quickly under very cold running water. Always dry the ingredients thoroughly before use. Another tips on how to make garnishes last. To prevent drying out, keep garnishes away from air and heat. If possible, protect them with an airtight covering of plastic wrap. Third tips, it is always best to make garnishes just before serving, but some can be prepared ahead of time and assembled on the plate at the last minute. Tips number four, store garnishes like you would store similar foods. If made with ingredients that are normally refrigerated, wrap in plastic wrap or store in an airtight bag or container and refrigerate. Tips number 5. If the ingredients are crispy or dried, or if they need to firm up, do not refrigerate. Store in a cool, dry place for several hours or overnight. Tips number 6. Some cut up or carved vegetables can be prepared in advance and covered with ice water until you are ready to assemble the finished presentation. Be sure to drain and dry them off well before placing the garnishes on the plate. And lastly, for the tips on how to make garnishes last, add garnishes to the food just before serving. Basic Elements of Plating Food plating is the process of arranging and decorating food to enhance its presentation. Improving the presentation of a dish adds value to the dining experience and provides room for higher markup on your food. The first one is to create a framework. Start with drawing and sketches to visualize the plate. Find inspiration from a picture or object. Assemble a practice plate to work on executing your vision. Second is to keep it simple. Select one ingredient to focus on and use the space to simplify the presentation. Clutter distracts from the main elements of your dish and might confuse the diners on what to focus on. Third, balance the dish. Play with colors, shapes, and textures to ensure diners are not overwhelmed. The presentation should never overpower flavor and function. Fourth is to get the right portion size. Ensure there is the right amount of ingredients and the plate complements the dish. The plate should not be too big nor too small. Strike the right proportion of protein, carbohydrates, and vegetables to create a nutritionally balanced meal. And lastly, highlight the key ingredient. Ensure the main ingredient stands out and pay equal attention to the support. This refers to the other elements on the plate, such as garnishes, sauces, and even the plate itself. Accompaniments of Appetizers 
sauces, dips, condiments, pickles, fruits and vegetables, Guidelines in the selection of appetizers. Keep the food light, delicate, and unsubstantial. Guests should not feel full before sitting down the main meal. Second, limit the variety of the ingredients. Do not overwhelm the guest's plate. Third, avoid repetition of the ingredients that will be served in the main meal. Fourth, Avoid highly spiced or highly acidic food. They will interfere with the meal to follow. Fifth, limit the number of appetizers served. This will prevent the guests from losing their appetites. And lastly, best is to provide the finger food so that the guests can savor them while standing and sipping their drinks. Food safety and hygiene. People get sick from food all the time, and it is often preventable by following some simple food safety and hygiene practices. Usually, a foodborne illness is related on how food was handled, stored, or prepared at home. Many foods have to be kept cold in order to prevent them from getting spoiled. Others need to be cooked thoroughly in order to remove any possible illnesses related to contamination. Hygiene practices such as thoroughly washing surfaces after preparation of food and maintaining clean hands also go a long way towards preventing illnesses. Some foods also come with more risk than others. So, it is good to know what you are getting and how to avoid potentially harmful effects. There are plenty of ways to maintain food safety and hygiene standards in the kitchen. Below are some things to be considered. First, clean your hands. One of the best ways to allow for good food safety and hygiene is to make sure that your hands are clean before you begin preparing a meal. Washing your hands with soap and water before you begin cooking will do the trick. Dry your hands with a clean towel or a paper towel afterwards. It is important to clean your hands again if you handle a raw meat or poultry during cooking. Otherwise, potentially harmful bacteria can transfer to other food. Also, be sure to wash with soap and water if you do anything else that might contaminate food, such as handling pets, going to the washroom, or gardening. Second, Chill food safely. Another basic tenet of food safety and hygiene is to store perishable food in the refrigerator or freezer until you're ready to use them. The refrigerator should be set at temperature in the range of 2 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius. If you have perishable leftover from a meal, make sure to put them in the refrigerator as soon as possible. Freezing is another good option. It is uncommon for frozen foods to harbor dangerous pathogens that cause illness. At these freezing temperatures, most pathogens are unable to function. However, frozen foods are not sterile. For instance, meat still needs to be cooked thoroughly after they are thawed. Third, cook foods properly. Some food needs to be cooked in order to maintain good food safety and hygiene. This is especially true when it comes to meat. While some meat are safe to eat raw, other must be thoroughly cooked in order to destroy pathogens. Bacteria or viruses could be present in the meat if it is prepared improperly. In general, red meat like beef or lamb does not need to be cooked all the way through. Searing the outside portion of the cut and serving rare is acceptable. On the other hand, mince and processed meats are those with cavities, such as a wool poultry, should be cooked thoroughly before serving. Lastly, learn about high-risk foods. 
it is good to learn about foods that pose higher potential risk for infection. Raw meat is one of the biggest culprits. Be sure to keep raw meat away from other food to prevent contamination. Raw dairy products can pose a similar risk, so it is usually advised that you purchase pasteurized products. In the case of shellfish, make sure that you get it from a safe source as some may contain pathogens or toxins. Sushi can be safe if it is prepared correctly and stored at a proper temperature. Here are some examples of high-risk foods and low-risk foods. That would be all from this topic. I hope you learn a lot. Thank you and keep safe.